First off, I would like to say thank you to the pastors and the leaders of the body of Christ for speaking out about what's happening in our country. This is not just happening here. And this, there's been protesting in China over issues, protests in Canada, London, missiles fired in Israel, and on and on and on. The earth is groaning and crying out. Romans 8, 18 and 19 says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared of the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Go on and read verses 20 to 23 that speaks about the earth and its subjection, uh, the things that it goes through in order to be set free. We feel the groaning and the longing of freedom ourselves. In the spirit, we want to be free. Uh, we're longing for the place that we live here to be as it is in heaven, like the word says um, on earth, as it is in heaven. We feel that, uh, the, long, the longing to be taken to be with our Savior. You know, many would rather be with him than to be here. Uh, the groaning is real. The division must stop. We must stop creating walls to separate us, and especially in the body of Christ. I need to address the church, the body of Christ as a whole. The divisions must stop here first. Denominational squabbles, theological differences, petty arguments, competition, and any other division must stop. We must go back to standing on the word of God. I'm excited to see the worship that is going up from the hearts of God's people. Worship is powerful and it's a mighty weapon, but we still have work to do. We're not there yet. I appreciate what God is doing in the awakening, in the, the place that he's bringing us into praise and prayer together, but we still have work to do. God is calling us to stand up. If we bind together and put down our differences, we are the voice of change that is needed. I've heard it said that the U.S. is a sleeping giant. Don't wake the sleeping giant. The truth is the body of Christ is the sleeping giant. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to get up and do what we're called to do? We represent countries all over the world, all socioeconomic groups, all ages, all nationalities. We span the globe and we are mighty force together when we're led by the spirit. We're larger than any one country. We're not called an army for no reason. We must fight correctly. All injustice is wrong. All hatred is evil. Murder is unacceptable. And when, I ask you, when are we going to speak up? If we cannot love each other well and show the world godly love, then how can we help them? We have to love and not hate. God is who the world needs. And we are his hands and his feet and his body. Let us stand together in love and protect those who are abused, neglected, unheard, and forsaken by man. Brutality of innocent men, women, and children at the hands of those in power is wrong and it must stop. Abuse of immigrants in holding facilities must stop. The sex slave trade must stop. Christians unable to worship freely in countries that are tyrannical must stop. Abortion must stop. I have cried and cried. God has such sadness seeing his children fighting and it must stop. But when will we, the body, stop letting all of this go by and say nothing? When will we stop sleeping? The sleeping giant has to get up. And yes, we have to fight with love, but we have to protect those who are in need. We have to speak out. 
If we allow this evil to continue, who are we in the earth? If the earth is full of sin and hatred, whose fault is it but the church? Because we are not doing our job. Will we love others well? We are created, each of us, with different purposes inside the body. We make up the body by being different. That is the beauty of the body of God. The purpose is to share the gospel of Jesus, but we do it in different ways. One intercedes, one teaches, one preaches, one offers kindness through service. Another one does labor. Whatever it is that God created you to do, whatever gifts he has given you, offer them back to him. Ask him, what do you want me to do for the body? Pray, please, please pray. Ask what you can do for the body right now. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, they are one, Also is so also is Christ. We need one another to make up the body. Embrace one another with love. Appreciate the differences. Celebrate the diversity. Support one another through, through prayer. And whatever ways God gives you, whatever strengths he's given you, if you work with your hands, then work with your hands for God. Offer it to your neighbor. You can reach the lost through anything that he gives you to do. You can support the body through any gift that he has given you. We are united if we're united, then we can reach the lost. If we are divided, it says in Luke eleven seventeen, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and a house divided against itself falls. If half of us believe one thing and half of us believe, believe another and some of us are okay with this sin, some are okay with that sin and we want to squabble over uh, theological differences. It, it's said in the word, you know, why are you fighting over um, circumcision? Why are you fighting over who's baptized how? I mean, this is not a new problem, but we have to overcome it. We have got to stop fighting amongst ourselves. We have to stand arm in arm. We need to pray together and we need to ask what needs to be done to make this different. What, what can we do to be the change? I'm asking, I'm asking for input. I'm asking for input. Join with me. Let's stand together. Let's pray. Let's seek the Holy Spirit. And let's find a way for the world to see us united as one, making a difference. We can't sit by any longer and let this go on. Be the change.